Hello and welcome to Gadget Joe and today we take a look at Thermal Tech's Ring Silent Pro 12 air cooler. The Ring Silent Pro is a large form factor air cooler that is designed to offer the maximum cooling performance for your CPU without the need to invest in water cooling. Let's start off by opening a box and taking a look at what's inside. You get user manuals and warranty sheets, a box that contains all the fixings and fittings, then the cooler itself inside some foam alongside the Ring 120mm fan too. The cooler aside, let's focus on what you get in the box. First you get the rear mounting base plate, this has a soft but firm sponge layer on the back. Next you have the top mounting plate that looks very much the same without the foam backing and then a mounting plate that is used to secure the cooler to the bracket. All are made from high quality aluminium with a chrome finish. You get a small syringe with some of Thermaltake's own brand thermal paste. You then get a reducer cable, this allows you to connect the fan and reduces the spin by half to make it less noisy and more efficient. You get a bag of four screws used for mounting the bracket to the base plate. A bag of four extension fittings that raise the bracket off the motherboard to avoid contact. This bag contains four screws used to fix the fans to the brackets. You get some additional mounting screws. And next is a bag of four screws used to fix the base plate through the bottom of the motherboard. This is a mounting bracket that holds the 120mm fan and then clips onto the cooler itself and there are two of these. The cooler itself is a large unit that consists of 32 aluminium plates that are well made and strong with very little movement thanks to support on the side that keep them well spaced apart and also offer a much welcome form of strength and robustness. At the base of the cooler is a contact plate that is made of nickel plated copper. This feeds off with 5 heat pipes that extend from either side and up through the heat sink to the top and tapered off at the end. The contrast between the black heatsink and the nickel pipes and base plate really add to its appeal and the whole cooler has a very industrial yet modern appearance that will sit nicely in pretty much any case. The fan that comes included is the Ring LED red 120mm fan. This also comes in blue. The fan is efficient, relatively quiet and provides adequate airflow. Attaching the fan to the heatsink requires a little assembly work. You start by getting these four screws the fan, a screwdriver and the two mounting brackets we saw earlier. To secure the fan to the bracket, you simply align the feet of the fan to the top of the recess plate within the bracket here and then screw the fan into place. Repeat this on the other end and then repeat for the second mount and then once you have both brackets secured to the fan, you simply take these notches on the inside of these brackets and clip it on to the inside of your heatsink and then you're done. The assembly of the cooler is now complete and it looks really nice. The Ring Silent Pro 12 air cooler is a very large cooler that will suit larger cases. However, this larger size allows for maximum cooling performance. Now that you have the cooler assembled, you now move on to mounting it onto your board. The Pro 12 has support for multiple Intel and AMD platforms and the bracket is universal and has holes in multiple places to allow for different board spacing. For our testing, we are using the ASUS ROG Strix B350F gaming motherboard, combined with AMD's Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. Let's start by removing the stock cooler mounts from the board by unscrewing these screws and removing the brackets and then the base plate from the rear. Be sure to keep these safe as you may need them at a later date. For this installation, you need the four mounting pieces labelled E, Four screws from bag F, four screws from bag G, the bottom motherboard mounting plate, the top mounting plate, and a fixing bracket for securing it into place, and of course, last but not least, the thermal paste. Starting first off with a rear base plate. As you can see on the back, the dense yet soft foam is there to provide protection against the rear of a motherboard and to provide some cushioning to prevent damage. Turning the board over, you then place the plates and align it to the mounting holes of a board to determine which position your screws need to be placed. Use these screws for this plate. Once all in, it should look a little like this. Now that you have them in place, you can align the motherboard and feed the screws through the holes, turn the board over and then place gently down on a non-static surface and make sure all the screws have fed through the holes. 
Next you need to use these spacers. Make sure to place the rubber lip onto the motherboard side. This again is vital for the extra protection once again. Screw it onto the screws here and repeat for the remaining three spacers and make sure they are hand tight only. Too tight and it will cause damage to the board. The spacers allow the top bracket to sit above any MOSFETs, capacitors etc. Now you place the top plate onto the four spacers and align the correct holes to the plate and using these screws simply secure it into place. Again do it tight but be careful to watch the board itself. With these in the bracket should be nice and sturdy. Now you need to wipe down the IHS on the CPU using some alcohol wipes to ensure it is dust free and clean for the thermals paste application. Carefully remove the top of the thermal paste syringe and then place a small piece of the paste right onto the CPU in the middle. There are of course lots of different methods of doing this which we will cover in another video. Taking the cooler itself you turn it on its back and you will see a sticker on the contact plate. Remove this but be certain not to touch the panel at all. It needs to remain clean and dust free for the best results. After doing this you need to decide which position you wish to put the cooler in and then simply place it on top of a CPU. Try your best to get it as central and aligned with the IHS and the base plate as possible so that you're not moving the thermal paste around too much. The paste itself will spread out and when it's in place and this will in effect create a small vacuum. Once you have it lined up and in place you take the mounting bracket and place it over the base panel through the space below the heat sinks. This bracket will sit in place and hold the cooler exactly where it needs to be. You can now remove the fan from the cooler by simply unclicking it from the heat sink. It may prove easier to remove it beforehand. Now you can proceed to screw in the fixing plate into place. Screwing one side is easier to do, however this is where you may notice an issue when it comes to fixing the second screw. Due to the large size of the heat shrink plates on the cooler, it actually obstructs the access to the second fixing screw. Thermaltake have took this into consideration and have strategically placed a hole going down through the plates that lines up with the fixing screw below. A standard screwdriver will fall short of reaching the screw so be sure to get yourself a larger screwdriver that will reach right through to the bottom. Once it's in place you can connect the fan back into place, plug the PWM into the CPU fan header on your motherboard and you're set to go. Another thing to take into consideration when installing your cooler is the RAM clearance. If you mount it in the direction that I have as seen here, you will notice that there is very little clearance for RAM. It is important to install your RAM first. If you locate the fan facing to the right, you will get full clearance for any RAM modules to be mounted. Once you have done all this, you are then ready to mount it into your case, connect everything else up and then you're good to go. The red ring fan will complement most builds nicely, and if red isn't your colour, there is, as mentioned earlier, a blue variant. What's more is that on the included fan mounts, the Ring Plus RGB fans fit in too. As for the performance of the Ring Silent Pro 12, we compared it to the stock Wraith cooler that came with the Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, and tested for the temp readings when idling, and also under load, got by a gameplay, and also under load when video rendering. The results came in as 35 degrees on the Wraith and 32 degrees on the Ring Silent Pro when idling. During gameplay on Tomb Raider, the Wraith hit 74 degrees whilst the Ring Silent Pro hit 70 degrees. And during rendering of an 8 minute 4K video, the Wraith came in at 73 degrees whilst the Pro hit a respectable 69 degrees. So as a result show, the Thermaltake Ring Silent Pro 12 air cooler comes in at around 3 to 4 degrees cooler than a stock Wraith cooler, which is a significant improvement and shows that the much larger size of the heat sinks and that 120mm fan pay off very well compared to the much smaller Wraith cooler. There are smaller coolers on the market, but the Ring Silent Pro certainly offers very reasonable cooling ability in a very attractive aesthetic appeal too. The black and nickel, along with a subtle glow of the LED ring fan, really make for a good look in almost any system. With impressive cooling performance, multiple platform supports for AMD and Intel, and a budget friendly price tag, it certainly is one of the better air cooling options on the market. The only real downside for me was the fact that you needed a long screwdriver for fixing the cooler to the CPU bracket. However, it wasn't a major issue by any means and hasn't dampened my thoughts on the cooler. And for this, we have awarded the Thermaltake Ring Silent Pro 12 Air Cooler our Gadget Joe Gold Award with a 4 star rating. 
And that pretty much wraps up this detailed unboxing, review and assembly video and of course as always I will leave links in the description below for the Ring Silent Pro 12 and also the other components used in the video such as the Ryzen 7 1700 and the ASUS ROG Strix B350F gaming motherboard. So you can check them out if you want one for yourself. And that's it for now so don't forget to leave a like if you liked this video and click subscribe and make sure to show your support by clicking the little bell too to get notifications to see regular content like this and more and to become a member of the ever growing Gadget Joe community. So with all that in mind it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next video.